talking to my friend, Pastor Derek Morris. And uh, Derek, I just love you and you and your wife, Baudel, Ruthie and I. Um, what a blessing you were to us. Your prayer meeting was about 100 miles away from where we live, and we drive over there anyway. And um, so I want you to tell us a little bit about what, doing something in the community. Well, um, I think if a, it spilled over. Yep. I think if a prayer meeting is going to be alive, it's not just focusing on our needs, but oh. reaching out. And right about the time the prayer revival started at Forest Lake, a group of individuals, mainly women, though some men too, began a quilt ministry. This squares is the, and prayers or prayers something? Prayers like, and squares. Prayers and squares. You That's notice it. the little strings on here? Yeah. Those, those are places where you can tie a prayer knot. And we would give these prayer quilts. Maybe a little boy had leukemia and, and a, a neighbor would say, we've got a house of prayer for all people. We should have houses of prayer everywhere. Yeah. Come to our house of prayer. We'll pray for the little boy. He would bring grandma, grandpa, uncle, aunt, brother, sister, fill a whole row in the church. This quilt, Don, is quilt number 3,068. That means that the dedicated people have made more than 3,000 prayer quilts. And the prayer ministry there at Forest Lake said, Pastor Derek, wherever you are in the world, if you need a prayer quilt to give to someone, to remind them someone's praying for them. But this helped you bring, uh, an, a kind of a, give an excuse to bring community well, that's people That's not an excuse, in. it's real ministry. That's you know? right. It's but, like, I have a neighbor who's hurting. Yeah. Bring them to the house of prayer. Okay, so you they would make that quilt and you would sometimes give it to the person themselves? Absolutely. There? We, we, would, we wouldn't just send them a quilt. We would say, come to the house of prayer. We'd open it up. We'd, we'd cover the person, wrap it around their shoulders, invite some people in the, in the house of prayer to gather around them, pray for them in the name of Jesus, expecting that God is going to work in wow. miraculous ways. Wow. Uh, you know, there, there was a man, not a Christian, but, but God touched his heart. His last request was to be buried covered in the, in with the quilt, the, quilt, oh, praise the, Lord. the prayers of God's yeah. people. Amazing. So I believe we, we need to reach out to our community. Yeah. We're not a little fortress house of prayer. Okay. We, we, yeah. we are a hospital That's where right. everyone is welcome. Yeah. House of prayer for all people. Marvelous. Um, you started out in a side room and a year later, I mean, just with a handful of people, a year later, you're having the midweek service in the worship center. Yep. And I remember asking one Wednesday evening, because the place was crowded, I said, how many of you are not members of this congregation? Right. And about a third of the people raised their hands. Yes. And I thought, this is not just house of prayer everywhere. Yeah. This is house of prayer evangelism. Yeah, H-O-P-E. The we, house of prayer evangelism. We're houses of prayer everywhere. Because but there are so many hurting people, Don, in yeah. the world. And what if they could say, if, if you need someone to pray for you in the name of Jesus, you can go to the Seventh-day Adventist Church here in our community. Yeah, wow. It's a house of prayer wow. for all people. Uh, I want you to tell a story real quick uh, about a man who had, a, uh, what, an alcohol problem? Yep. I remember his, the story. His mother dragged him. His name was David. Okay. His mother dragged him at the end of the service, said, he needs a miracle. I said, Lord, this is your work. We prayed for him in the name of Jesus. The next week he came back with a Bible. So here's a Christian mother who drags her 37-year-old yep. son. He said, I tried to kill myself. The rope broke. I can't even kill myself. <laughs> then the, Two weeks later, he came back with suicide notes. He said, I don't need them anymore. Jesus has given me a reason to live. Amen. That's the kind of miracles yeah. we need in our houses of prayer. Give me a number. By the time you it had reached kind of its full orb, um, what would be your attendance on a typical Wednesday night? You know, I, I think God's more in, interested in changed lives and I numbers. Know that, but, but I would say it multiplied by 20 or 30 times what we had when we started. And each one of those is a miracle of God. Houses of prayer everywhere. Amen. What a great example. Thanks so much, Derek.